Hey everybody, Doug here from T Plus Stuff. I am just hanging out, uh, doing a little chilling today. Um, I was going to be hanging out with uh, my buddy Jack, but uh, he decided to take a nap because he's an old man and that's what old men do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get to painting. Uh, I just did a video yesterday, um, but uh, this is not why we're forging. This is going to be a hangy hangout. I didn't really have any plans for it. Other than uh, I got some bases here I'm going to be working on, and uh, I'd love to know what y'all are working on too. So, what I'm going to do is go over to the downward cam. Um, I think that's about all the preamble I need to do, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's see here. There we are at the painting cam. Let me turn this light off, this light on. Look at this professional operation we got going on here. Jeez. All right, boom. My two bedroom apartment is just like Warhammer community painting tutorial, boom. All right, we got um, Ben checking in, Samuel, whoop whoop. Uh, just as a, a disclaimer before beginning getting too far, if my stream does cut out, understand that there is a storm outside. So, uh, you know, that might, that might take me out of commission. We'll see. It's kind of one of those weird storms where it goes from like, you know, a second biblical flood kind of rain to just nothing. To just kind of being windy. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Blades, uh, wait, we got Spezia, we're painting Reavers. Sweet. Uh, Doug, did you prime on the sprue? I did for these guys because I did it with the, what do you call it? The whatever the mortal shattered dominions the other bases uh because i go around the rims anyway and paint them black it doesn't really matter so i did this because i'm going to only use two of them at the moment um but yeah that is the plan this is the one of the sector and paleo alice ones they put out so let's see uh, let's see what up Doug? hey john Doug, why isn't the song I saw in, I why isn't the song I saw the sign playing in the background? <laughs> uh, because mainly for uh, YouTube copyright violation strike reasons, that is uh, probably the biggest one. Let me grab my paints here. We'll get to some work. So I um my basic plan with these is I want it to look like a rundown hive world type thing and so uh what i'm gonna do is i, I like this color uh, i'm actually gonna build it with carrick stone which is pretty close uh this is just a camo paint primer thing and so i'm gonna go in uh first and pick out all of the metal bits um i don't normally prime stuff on the sprue but for these bases it doesn't matter so i'll go through and do that and then do washes and that's pretty much it like i said i just have these two to do uh, because that gives me enough of the 40 mils for the Grey Knight Terminators they have and enough of the 32s for the uh, Strike Squad guys. At least all the ones I have built right now. So I'll tell you what, I'll put that off to the side right there. We'll grab ourselves some paint. Doug, what models are going on those bases? Sorry. Uh, yes, that is uh, Grey Knight Terminators as well as right now. So... If you don't know, uh, you can build a bunch of different units from the Grey Knights uh, Terminator and Strike Force kits. Strike Force just being like the basic bros. And so, so far, I have two boxes of the Strike Force guys. I built one of them as two squads of five. Um, five with swords, five with halberds. And I was like, okay, that's a, that's a good little balance, you know, for some battle line, that kind of stuff. Uh, not battle line, but you know, troops. Um, eventually I want to, you know, have enough to fill out a battalion detachment. Since that kind of seems to be the way things are headed right now with what we've seen so far in the new 40k. So my plan is to do that. Um, build out a battalion. And so part of doing that was just making sure I had the, the basic troop choices. I did, sadly, after I I got all of the, the Terminator stuff unpacked and really take a good look at it. I found out that a lot of them were, they were just kind of uh, built in sort of a funny way. Like, I need to, I had to take the arms off of many of them. Uh, luckily, Paladins, which are like kind of the elite Terminators that they have, 
uh, can come in units of three minimum. And so I do have some un a unit of three of those guys. Uh, but ultimately, I, I just what I need to do is get another box of Grey Knight Terminators so that I can, uh, you know, harbor bits from one to the other. Which is not a big deal. I mean, it's really not. Getting hold of that kit might be a problem because uh, everyone and their mom seems to have went out and bought uh, them. But yeah, we'll see. They did that thing that they did, if you're familiar with uh, Age of Sigmar more than 40k, where, kind of like in Flesh Eater Courts, where like one kit becomes like a bajillion different options because a lot of the heroes are based on kind of like internal kit bashing amongst a specific kit, right? Like this, this thing used to be able to make two different kinds of units, but now you can kind of swap parts around to make all different kinds of weird things. It's like that. Um, so I need to get probably two more boxes of Terminators anyway, just to have all the, the elite and hero options, uh, as well as use the, the bodies and stuff that I already have. So, yeah, that's the plan. Doug, are the biggest bases dreadnought sized? I think so. I don't, I don't actually know. I don't know how big a dreadnought base size is. I mean, I saw yours the other day, but I didn't, uh, I imagine they are. It gotta be. This thing's huge. Luckily, I do have the the Dread Knight, uh, his base, already, so I don't have to find a replacement. That's like a big Mamma Jamma oval one, so i got to figure that out how I'm going to make that match this stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's not a problem. He's probably the coolest model in that set, though, I'll be honest. Spent all day looking at different uh, unit options and trying to understand the weapons and stuff, and... I gotta say, uh, it's much more straightforward than, than the Gene Steeler Cult one, because they had so many different kinds of units and so many uh, different, like, unit profiles in terms of, like, strength and toughness and leadership and all this kinds of stuff. It was different, very wildly different unit to unit. Whereas Grey Knights, it's like, this is a space marine. He can shoot mine bullets. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, he's memorizing what things do and, and, and kind of seeing how lists play out on through uh, battle reports online has been a super helpful. Uh, let's see. Let me move my chat here so I can see it a little bit easier. Give me just one hot sec. Uh, Michael, catching a live show. Whoop. I suppose it's hobby time for me too. Awesome. Yeah, dude, Jordan along. Yeah, actually, the more I look at it, I do think these are... I do think they are uh, Dreadnought size. That's a... Something I didn't even consider when I bought it, because I do want to have Dreadnoughts. Because they have the big guns that my guys need. So this is the nice part of doing bases where you get to be really messy because you're just doing the first layer. And there's no way to mess it up, <laughs> basically. My plan, uh, to give you all perspective, is I'm going to do all the metallic. So it's basically just metal and some uh, a bronzy type thing. I'm going to do the metals and then um, pick out the bits where the, I had the metal bleed over a little bit by accident with the Carrick Stone, which is a pretty good uh, facsimile of the spray paint that I used. And um, then just basically wash the whole thing, do some minor dry brushing, maybe pick out a few edge highlights on some of the stuff. But that's pretty much it. And I like these bases. These are nice. Let's see what we got going on. Um, just finished Realm Slayer series. Love the Old World Dwarves outlook on the new. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard great things about it. I have not uh, listened to it myself, but I would like to. see here 
not much going on in the uh, Warhammer community news today, but I guess it is Saturday, so... People can take a break for the weekend, I suppose, from all of the... Uh, oh, the rumors and the previews and all that kind of stuff, but... I will admit, I was kind of anxious to get up and be like, what's happening? What's next? What's new? I love it. My, my daily uh, Warhammer community dopamine rush. Uh, let's see, 60 millimeter, uh, 65. Maybe that's a 65? I don't know. I'll double check in a second. I'll see what the, uh, what exactly one I got. I'm half tempted to take extra 10 Reavers I have. Uh, and turn them into corn marauders. Hmm. Marauders. Marauders. Wouldn't... Wait, wouldn't corn marauders... Wouldn't they be way big for that? I don't I mean, I only know, like, the actual marauder from uh, AOS. So if there's a 40k one I don't know about, then that's probably what you're talking about. But I don't... Uh, right on. I guess, I, I mean, I've only seen the Reavers once or twice, I think, in person. I don't know, I don't know a ton of, like, uh, ben, ben in the chat plays Space Marines, but I don't know, he's not, like, hankering to buy everything every week that comes out, so I don't know, no, no. Ben, do you have any Reavers? I don't remember. Uh, let's see, thoughts? Um, yeah, my thought is just about the size, but... If, if I'm thinking of a different unit, then you got that on lock. Go for it. I'm all about conversions and stuff. Alright. Old Dreadnoughts are on 60 mil. Redemptor Dreads come on 90. Hmm. That's not 60? Let me look it up. I'm, I'm actually... We're having this nice little debate, and I am just dying to know. Let's see. Let me go to the Games Workshop page. I'll find the exact set that I found. Let's see. Dread. So, yeah. Dreadnought. Painting, modeling. Places, round... Okay, so the base that comes in the set is a 65 millimeter round, and the model is supplied with a 60 millimeter scenic base. What a dumb difference. Ah, that's infuriating. It's so close. Weird. Yeah, what does go on a 65 millimeter base? I found a terrible, terrible excuse to start a new army and expand my daughter's cane. Those Sisters of Slaughter masks look like good conversion fodder for Night Lord helms. Oh yeah, the goblin kind of looking faces. Solid call. Doug approves. I never really got into kit bashing. Like, I don't do it a ton. When I do... It's one of those things I just, I don't know, unless I have the bits available, like, you know, a buddy has them or I have them laying around, it's just, I just don't think to go look for for parts that reflect what I want to make. Not sure why. Then again, I don't really always have a vision for like what I want to create, and so that's a lot of the stuff I pick up in Army because I like the way GW did it, so I just don't try to convert stuff because I'm like, but I like it. I chose it because I like it. And also because I have a problem with, you know, swapping armies every day. My buddy Dan, uh, 
he, he was a little bit dumbfounded when uh, I was like, hey, just so you know, I uh, now picked up Grey Knights. And he's like, you just told me you were like all in on Gene Stealer Colts last week. I was like, buddy, you got to keep up, man. Come on. This is something my followers found out really quick. Let's see, we'll go around like this. Uh, dealt with all the Warhammer YouTuber drama today. Thank you for being a place of positivity. Might makes right wargaming. What's going on on YouTube? I have no idea. I'm, ve I'm honestly, man, I'm so out of the loop. <laughs> uh, is it like 40k? Is it, oh, I guess I should ask. Is it about Games Workshop or is it about... Warhammer 40 or 40k or something specific like that. We don't have to talk about it. I mean, we're not gonna like dig into negative stuff. I just, I'm one of those people that like would walk out of the house and be like, "What do you mean? What's what's COVID 19? You know what I mean? We're just like where everyone else has been like through hell. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, John says, I'm sorry, I missed this earlier, John. Trying to figure out uh, what paint scheme to do for my Stormcast Vanguard chamber. Good choice. Can't land on a scheme that grips me, uh, like my Flesh Eater Quartz and Iron Jaws do. Um, I'll be honest, you asked for my advice. I, I don't have one, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and the reason is, I tend, whenever I did Stormcast, I always stuck to an existing chamber. And so I would just say look, I mean, like, I mean like based on my experience, I would just say look through chambers and see what looks cool. Um, but I mean, there's nothing about the models that like makes it stand out with, you know, this color over this one and that kind of stuff. Like that, that kind of where I can look at a model and be like, you should paint this blue, right? Or something like that. Not quite. Now the next one, I'm actually just going to paint the parts that I need. Because I don't actually need all of the... Actually, that's not true, because some of my heroes are on, on 40s as well, so I do need those. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to skip the 65, apparently, millimeter base. Let's see... Um, I'm generally more interested in looking at third-party models than kit bashing, but it depends. You know, my biggest thing with, with uh, third-party models um, is I just don't know where to find them. Like, people are just like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, freedomeagle.imperium net slash blogspot.com. They sell fantastic Slanesh models. And you're like, how the hell did you find them? <laughs> um... That's always been that's always been my problem, and part of that is just the nature of advertising in in, in a, a very niche industry. But uh, yeah, if you if you know of good um, Grey Knight and Nurgle stuff, because those are my two armies, I'm, I'm kind of sticking with for the foreseeable future. Uh, go ahead and let me know. Tell me in the comments. And hey, if you are someone who makes models and you're like Doug. Why don't you talk about my stuff and paint it while you do and talk about how cool it is? I will do that as well. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, Vinci says, I got into it because I have uh, to do things very slowly right now. Don't have much time to actually play, so I'm using that as an excuse to go the extra mile on them. That's a great, no, that's a, that's a fantastic reason. Um, just being like, hey, I'm going to stretch this out for my entertainment purposes, which, I mean, honestly, increases the, um, the value of every hobby dollar you spend is just increased by the longer you can, you know, make that purchase meaningful and last. So I support you. Uh, Mike makes Mike gaming. Uh, Arch got added for his oh, hateful comments from his Discord. Yeah, it'll happen. You'll have that. And the drama is about 
Arch being a Nazi. Okay, well, that seems hateful. I'm gonna say... Uh... Let's not uh, worry about that. <laughs> let's lean into my strengths by saying, all are welcome. Let's just talk about painting toy soldiers. <laughs> Because, uh, one thing I've, I've never, you know how sometimes there's just those people that like, uh, I mean, this is a common thing. It has nothing to do with YouTubers. It's just humans. But there are just some folks in life that like don't feel complete unless they have a nemesis. I've never been one of those. I'm just like, I'm, I'm more like uh, Pam from The Office where it's just like, I hate the idea that Al-Qaeda hates me. I think if Al-Qaeda really got to know me. <laughs> so it's like, I don't... I don't stir trouble. The only thing I've ever said on this channel about another one that I'm like negative is that Spiky Bits has so many ads that I feel the need to uh, scrub my computer with water and dish soap. <laughs> but I think that's a pretty common theme amongst a lot of us, which is why they have a uh, oh, they have a don't they have a subscription service something like that where there's no ads? It's whatever. Point is, I stay out of stuff. <laughs> Uh, one thing I will say for all the one who's watching, so today, I was like, you know what I want to do? Like, I want to do the same thing I do on uh, my Facebook and Instagram, like my, you know, the two plus stuff, official social media stuff that I do on my personal account. Uh, if you don't, I don't, I don't friend many people on my personal account. It's more for family and that kind of stuff and local friends. But what I do is I spend the entire day doing nothing but sharing memes. There is not a single political, current eventy, nothing. It's just memes. And it makes my life so much better. And my friends have thanked me for it. <laughs> and so um, the point I'm trying to get to is that I'm going to start doing that for AOS and 40k. So in the description down below, you'll see no, uh, links to my Instagram and Facebook, and they're all linked together. I also have a Twitter. Uh, and I just post, I just post memes and thoughts and encouragement. So hey, if you want to... Uh, Add some positivity into your social media life. Go ahead. Add me on Insta Insta and uh, Facebook or whatever. I have them all synced so that the same same memes go to all your all the big platforms. Let's see. Sometimes I wake up in a cold sweat after a nightmare that Doug got outed for insulting people's paint schemes. <laughs> I mean, you know, I got thoughts, but uh, I'm also the first person to say my opinion's not important. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where someone can... Whenever an army releases, okay, this is going to be just between... Me and my close friends, close friends being literally anyone who watches this stream. Whenever a new army releases, the first week, you see the best of it, right? The most fantastically painted stock models that GW puts out because they've sent early versions to incredible painters around the world who have them ready. Now, the second week of any new army's release, you're going to see the people who... We're so excited to get that model and uh, just herped and derped through it. Like there's like hunks of stuff hanging off of them. And I say herped and derped, not insulting anybody. Love your models. What I'm saying is that like, I have thoughts. <laughs> but the thing is, is that it's so much more important to be like, hey dude, that looks fantastic. Why don't we try doing some highlights or a wash or something like that? You know what I mean? Like, hey, let's, you spent so much money on this and you're so excited. I'm so happy for you. Would you like to make it better? If so, let's do it. If not, cool, man. I'm super happy for you. So I I do have thoughts on painting, but uh, I also understand that when when people hear uh, my impressions of painting stuff, you got to remember that I am not somebody who views these things as pieces of art, right? Like like uh, some of those pro painter guys are like, oh. This is a model is like a three-dimensional canvas. And to me, it's like, nah, it's a game piece. Uh, which is why I don't feel bad getting rid of them. Um, and why I don't have a lot of a 
opinions on other people's stuff because <laughs> it's just it's capious. Love it. Uh, let's see. Vinci, I'm not, allow I'm not allowing myself to use third-party stuff because I want to get into competitive and GW won't put third-party stuff on their official streams. That's, I mean, that's perfect. And, you know, that's a total legit reason to stick with first-party stuff. If you have a dream of getting on uh, their streams, I don't know, the, I don't, it's not Warhammer TV necessarily, but uh, event coverage and that kind of thing. And honestly, that's kind of where I'm at too. Like, uh, I don't, like I don't I don't think I've maybe played two games at my local store like my local G-Dub store specifically um not much at all like honestly the and the the most of the games I play there are like demos to like see if I'm into a different system so like I did my demo of Underworlds there and and that kind of stuff but um as far as just like scheduling with a friend and and meeting up at Games Workshop to play a game that doesn't really happen to me and so I was thinking about how come I don't buy third-party stuff. And it's like, yeah, but if I travel to, like, you know, Nova again, and G-Dubs is like, hey, bro, you want to be on a stream? I'm like, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> and I want to have absolutely no barriers to that. Let's see. Hello, just drive. What did I miss? Nothing. We're just chatting. Uh, I mean, to be fair, Spikey Vets does have a metric ton of ads. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's their business model. That's fine. I don't begrudge them. Now there's just one left. Now I'll just take some out of the pot. Okay. Let's see. I want to see a chat with Doug and Goobertown for the absolutely wholesome content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goobertown, what's your favorite color to paint? Red. Oh, man, let's just talk about our favorite red things. And that it would just be like adult Sesame Street, or adult um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, where it's just two people just talking about calm things. And <laughs> I love his content. Eat it up. It is, uh, if you guys don't know, Goobertown is a fantastic... Um, he does a lot of painting and hobby stuff rather than like gaming, so it's not really game specific. So even no matter what you play, you can go find something of value there. And he's just uh, he's the Bob Ross of AOS or, or or war gaming, I should say, where it's just pure calm. And you're just like, man, this guy seems too calm to even like tie his shoes. Like that would exert too much energy. How does he do it? <laughs> Let's see. Vinci says, even though even though Jack added him as a bully in the AOS coach stream, I didn't catch that one yet. I'm sure he did. <laughs> I have no doubt. If if someone was to come into this chat right now and be like, Doug, you wouldn't believe it. Someone called you a total dick. I'd be like, what? Who? And then if you said Jack, he'd be like, nah, that's fine. <laughs> You got me there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Your boy loves memes. <laughs> totally. Uh, like they didn't take the time to finish clipping and cleaning the models. Oh, um, yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Just uh, incomplete builds and that kind of thing. And you're just like, eh, nah. You'll see what I mean. When the... When the um, Oh, what are they called? R Lumineth Realm Lords come out. You'll see what I mean. The first week, everything will be incredible. And then the second week, you're going to go, Mmm, bold choice, Cotton. <laughs> and then every week after that is going to be people who are, uh, who didn't get advanced copies of things, but went all out when they did get them and made the most incredible like dioramas and that kind of stuff and that's always fun to see when it kind of levels out a little bit from people who are racing to have models done to put online to you know people who artists who, who view them as art and took the time to 
build these incredible things, but because GW didn't send them an early one, they have the freedom to do whatever they want. And that's a huge, that's a huge get. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, techless longhorns. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, Jean Nicholas Richard just got home. Guess I got some paint bike kings to paint. Well, welcome aboard if you want to. Don't feel pressure, it will still be here later. What models are the bases for? Vinci, these are for my uh, new Grey Knights. Totally forgot the name of the army I was just excited about last night. Grey Knights. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I had Gene Steeler Colt. Um, because I wanted something quick and easy to paint up so I could play small games with my buddy Ben. But then we played the most amazing game of 40k ever and I had a great time. I went to his house. It was the first war game that I played in, I don't know, how many months we all been in quarantine? My goodness. Went over to his house. It was just the two of us. Um, had such a great time, and then with all the stuff coming out, like the news and that kind of thing for 40k, I was like, I am so excited, but it, you know, fully playing 40k and getting into the hobby was not uh, the intention with the Gene Steeler Colts, and so I'm looking at it, I'm like, I, I want something more elite. Like, I mean, and honestly, I think that's been a huge part of why I've kept the Maggotkin. Like, I have zero de desire to get rid of my Maggotkin. For two reasons, is that one, I put a ton of work into the bases. Um, and the second part being that like, they're they're just an army that I like. They are elite, they are hard to move, um, easy to transport, you know? I mean, with the exception of, once I figured out a case for the uh, Pusquale Blight Lords, the big fat flyer boys, uh, things got real easy, but, and so I was like, trying to think of a, of a good analog which you could say death guard until you realize that every death guard player in 40k just brings 200 zombies and i'm like eh, i'm not about that life um i'm gonna skip this song i don't know what's going on here <laughs> and Give me one sec here. Let me figure this whole business out. Spezia, the donation. Oh, thank you so much. That's super kind of you. Got anything you want to talk about, Spezia? Or you want me to talk about? No hold barge. Yeah, I, um, I'll be honest. Like, I, I, I did have a, a, a period of... of uh, well, I say a period. I just have depression. Um, I'm medication for it, but I was adjusting some meds. And, and during the time, you know, when the world was ending, probably not the best time to uh, figure out that your current course of treatment's not really working. And so it was just a rough couple of weeks where I just needed to step offline just because I got home from work. And I was like, I just can't. I just don't have it in me. But then I hung out with some friends and I got my hobby mojo back and... Boom. Back to live streaming. So if you are thankful for the streams, go ahead and thank Jack from Rerolling Ones and Ben who's in the chat. They got me reinvigorated. Question, are you going to giving the whole army scenic bases? Yes, because a whole army of Grey Knights is like 30 dudes. And so that's the plan. Uh, it, yeah, yeah, you know, it worked out really well for my, uh, oh my gosh, what are they, Maga Cannon Nurgle with my custom bases. The only thing I, I learned from that that I don't want to do again is I don't want to do 
green stuff rolling out every single base. That was miserable. I won't lie. <laughs> uh, I did not enjoy that. That was not fun for me. Uh, let's see. I sometimes think I'd love to try an elite custodes 40k army, but I feel like I'm bad at painting gold. Well, my friend, that's you. Know, you don't need talent. You just need retributor armor spray paint and uh, what? Reichland flesh shade. <laughs> skill this guy's talking about. Wait until these new Necrons drop and you'll see how little skill it takes to get an army painted. <laughs> That's not a joke at anyone's expense. It's just, you know that there's going to be like that one competitive list and every 40k player who wants to win tournaments is just going to like set the models there and just with lead belcher. <laughs> Ding, army's done. Uh, let's see. I think you're great and I just appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. What do you think of Night Haunts? Um, but they're always crying blood. On models with metal masks covering the skulls, I would have lines of blue oxide and rust depending on the metal. That sounds rad. Um, I focus on, with Night Haunt, I love people who focus on eternal punishments. And so this idea of like actively being sorrowful and sad and, and oppressed in, in death, right? Like a year, because they can't stop crying, right? Um, I think that that's a really cool idea. And I think that you should do it. No, let's see. So we're gonna ignore that one because I don't know what a 65 base is for. Um, I think we're ready to do washes. It'll pick out the details on a lot of this. I'm gonna get some gold. We'll just pick out random parts inside the uh, the components here. Oh, I'm gonna shake that a little bit more. That's real rough. Uh, thanks, Finn and Jack. Yes, yes, thank them. Joseph and Gonzalez, aren't you moving to the Midwest soon? Um, we're, so, we're planning on it. Um, already told family and everything like that. Uh, the plan is to move sometime probably in November. Um, but, you know, obviously with everything that's going on in the world, we're trying trying not to get our hopes up, you know, if, if it's not a good time. It, I don't know what we're going to do. But just try not to put ourselves in a position where we're like super screwed if if it's not a good time. So yeah, I don't know. But yes, it is still still the plan. I'm just picking out some of these little connector bits. Uh, Joseph, are you out in the Midwest? We can hang out. is color wise a little bit on the dull side and the reason I want that is because I want the the gray knights and their shiny dead sexy armor to just pop Let's see. Uh, Smith Saney. Oh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you for your donation. You think Catacross will replace Arcan as Nagash's number one? I do think militarily he is. Um, just from what we saw with Wrath of the Ever Chosen, like when, when Nagash wanted to make a big uh, military power play, like not one that's related to magic and spell casting, like the Black Pyramid. But when he wanted to, like, boots on the ground, conquer something. He didn't go to Archon, uh, Arcan. He he went straight to Catacross, which is awesome, because that means there's you know I think it provides a good difference between those two characters, like what they offer, Nagash, and why he would choose to make them, or at least keep them alive and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
So, do I think he's going to replace him as number one? I don't know, because I think Catacross is too much... Like, he's not fanatically devoted in the same way. Like, they offer different things to Nagash. Um, and Catacross has shown absolutely zero interest in magic, which is a huge defining part of wielding the power of Shyish. So, I, I'm, I'm running around in circles here, but what I'm really trying to say is... I don't know if he'll replace him as number one, but uh, I would not be surprised if um, it went from like Nagash on top, Arcan number two, and maybe Catacross number three to more like Nagash on top. Then there's like a council of, you know, different incredibly useful and powerful souls beneath him uh, that were all on equal footing, which I guess you could say is kind of, you know, what the Mortarks fundamentally are supposed to be, but um, we know that not all the Mortarks are A, super on board and reliable, like particularly Manfred and, um, oh my gosh, what's her name? Vampire Lady? Neferata. So yeah, we don't know that, but um, there's certainly that next level of loyalty that Arcan and Catacross are a part of. So, I don't know. All right, now for the best part. Dumping a whole bottle of Agrax Earthshade. As soon as I can find it. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm falling behind the chat here. Um, I've made pavement for all my Ravenwing bikers. That was a pain, but it'll be nice painted. Oh, that's awesome. I have many built armies, but I'm super nervous about actually getting to painting, even to base spraying level. Well, my friend, uh, we can definitely help with that. So, uh, what is it? Camarus? Camarus? I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Tell me what armies you have, because we can, uh, we can start with one, right? And success at one army is, I promise you, will make you feel... Like, it'll demystify things, and so you'll feel more excited about the next one. And so, list off your armies for me, what you got. And we can we can choose a good starting point, and if you'd like, if you're open to it, I won't force it upon you, but I am more than happy to walk you through how I would paint them to get it done quickly, efficiently, and, and then look pretty... Uh, I believe the word I want to use is baller. <laughs> um... Narrative inspiration. I'm going to have my Stormcast be the rememberers of Sigmar, like the curse is losing themselves. So what if there's a support chamber? Oh, yeah. So you write down, basically, Stormcast histories in case they're lost and that kind of thing. There was actually a part of that in... Was it Black Pyramid? I think it was. There was one... Someone correct me if I'm wrong. There was one book where... Uh, it is Hallowed Nights for sure, I remember that. And they were at a ceremony where uh, they basically recounted the, the previous life and deeds and people like store their memories because they are now understanding that reforging messes you up. But every chamber would have, if they wanted to, a different version of that. So the idea of the remembers is awesome. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit behind, so I'm catching up here. Let me, let me just crank out some questions right quick. Uh, whereabouts in the Midwest? Looking for Eastern Iowa. We lived in the Iowa City area before, and that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, Mike would be much missed here in the Midwest. Yeah, I know. I'll miss. I'll miss you all too. It'll be a rough, rough transition. Because I think I had have more friends here than I ever did in Iowa, to be honest with you. And I'm sure that'll change, because now, you know, when I was in Iowa, I wasn't nearly as active in the hobby as I am now, and so I've kind of used it to make local friends and that kind of stuff, and so I'm sure that'll it'll improve, and I'll be able to go to all the Midwest events so I can rack up a friends list, hopefully, hopefully fairly quick. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Why do you think Nagash keeps Manfred around after all the crap he's pulled? Because, uh, in my opinion, um, all idiots are useful. <laughs> that he, he is a powerful soul. Um, like, you know, he's just, he's, he is incredibly smart. He is dangerous. Um, and Nagash can bind him that if he truly called his will, Manfred would have to follow it. Um, but he's also, you know, he's also a familiar one. And so you can, you can play up and manipulate someone who you know very well. I think that's definitely a part of it. I also think that Manfred is incredibly arrogant and wants to be in charge, even though he never will. And so part of having Manfred around is literally to punish him as a constant reminder that you are always at least number two, if not lower. And so it is his eternal torture to be like, but I should be in charge. No, you shouldn't. Shut up, nerd. So that that would probably be my assessment. If anyone else has any reasons, why would Nagash keep Manfred around? Those are mine. Because Nagash sees all of his Mortarks ultimately as tools, right? Tools to be used for a specific purpose. Um, and and Neferata is useful for the plots and the schemes and intrigue of court. She's also powerful on her own right. And Manfred, just a, he's a he's straight conqueror. Uh, let's see. Hashtag it's canon now. Um, Ailey, my computer's GPU failed. I guess I have all the time in the world of hobby now. What are these bases for? Uh, they are, uh, someone pointed out they are for 40K. Kaima Russ. Is that correct? Kaima Russ? Because that would be awesome name. I apologize for messing it up. Doug, do you have the Ritual of the Damned Psychic Awakening book? It has Grey Knights. Oh, it gives them a good boost. I don't. Um, I... I I wanted to kind of get like a force painted before I go nuts on rules and that kind of stuff. Like I'm, I'm reading through the uh, the codex now. I went and picked that up yesterday. And so that that's enough for me <laughs> at the moment. But every time I read something online, there's discussion about, you know, this this really did help the Psychic Awakening stuff. And, and people are, seem to be far less down on them as a faction than when I remember, like when I stepped away from 40k a little bit ago. So uh, I will definitely get it, especially because they've already confirmed, you know, all those supplements are going to be totally legal. Uh, let's see. We're going to leave a little with Ben. Um, Spetsy says, you got me as a friend. Oh, cool. I'm two hours from Meltdown. Where is Meltdown held? I know I've heard of the Midwest Meltdown because I listened to the Preferred Enemies. Um, like it's a 40K podcast in case you don't know. And I like them quite a bit because they're very friendly um, and, and new people oriented. But uh, yeah, I don't actually know where it is. Um, Top armies for me are Stormcast Eternals, aiming for Knights of the Aurora colors. Let me look that up. Let's see, Knights of Aurora. Okay, so Knights of Aurora is silver armor with green, where the blue is normally for Hallowed Knights and that kind of stuff. Bro, I'm assuming, I'm sorry. I shouldn't assume you're a man. I don't actually know, because I don't know that name. Um, this is, we can, if you'd like, let me know. Um, I don't want to overstep any bounds, but I am more than happy to walk you through how I would paint this. Oh, I should go back to my chat here. Okay. 
think it's an aspect of Nagash's hubris. He believes uh, he could be seriously challenged. Oh yeah, he never never thinks that Manfred is a threat. We see him as conniving, but Nagash just sees him as foolish and dumb. No one's as smart as Nagash. Uh, let's see. Vinci says, my narrative for my coalesced is a work in progress, but essentially their salon is sick for some reason. Um, Zinch infected blankets. <laughs> so they land on Hish, become coalesced, and go feral. That's cool. Yeah, there was a, um, one of the stories. I, I don't remember which one it was, to be honest with you, because the second I do a lore video, that lore falls out of my skull. Um, <laughs> uh, but basically, um, the salon was, oh, it's the one with all the source, but everyone focuses on source. Um, the salon is, is injured. He's alive, but he can't really leave the temple. And so the source basically take control of the system and they're like, the only power is military power. And they just like activate a war machine and it's just super cool. Let's see. Sorry, I'm just catching up here, making sure. I always lose my place whenever I look down. What will be the best book to start on AOS lore? Probably right now is Soul Wars, because uh, it's the most current eventy. Um... Yeah, it's it's tough, honestly. Like, I can't overstate how excited I am that Black Library is doing like an ongoing series to push the lore forward for 40k because I want that in AOS so bad. So that if someone comes along and they're like, "Where should I start?" I'd be like, "This series, start book one. <laughs> Meet me at book 30." <laughs> because that's basically my plan. If they if they ever do that in AOS. Uh, let's see. Manfred is there for entertainment. <laughs> While the old blood hunts the followers of chaos uh, out of duty and find a cure. Cool. Um, okay, so about your, your paint scheme for the uh, Knights of Aurora. Get a pen ready. Or I guess obviously you can just watch this later. But the way that I would paint them based on... Here, I'll do my screen share. The way that I would paint these based on what I'm looking at. Let me put my paintbrush down. Uh, where's the better picture? Sorry, the light's probably not great on you guys right now. I apologize, but just focus on what's on the screen. Um, if someone was going to start painting with this scheme, first of all, great choice. The first thing I would do is go to Games Workshop, and I would buy a can of Lead Belcher. Now, I'm going to keep this as, as simple and minimal as possible, because the whole point is to get you one painted army so you can can feel confident about going forward with the others. So you get a spray paint can of lead belcher, and then you get uh, a can a, a pot of a paint called Retributor Gold. What else do you need? Um, you need I would say Celestra Gray and White Scar. Um, you do put down Celestra Gray first, and then White Scar goes on top of it as like a highlight layer, and that's how you're going to do the white that's on this lightning bolt and the shoulder pad and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, well, it's for the tabard, probably corn red. So right now you're, you're a can of lead belcher, which is your primer and paint. So you're gonna spray them down with lead belcher, pick out all the gold parts with retributor armor, pick out the tabard with corn red, and then the shield parts with celester gray and then a little bit of white on top of it to make it really, really pop. And then I want you to douse the whole thing in Agrax Earthshade, and I promise you, you will like this model. Um, as far as the green goes, let me see. I always forget the different names for green colors here.
That one... Hmm. That one, what I would do is ask um, whatever the GW store or whatever hobby store you go to. Let me see. I'm pulling up the painting app right now. I'm thinking just something simple like Dark Angel's green colors are, are really, really simple to do. Uh, painting. Uno momento. Color. Green. So to match that particular type... You'd probably be looking at the dark green, which is... Yeah, I don't want that. Yeah. Uh, Caliban green. For a start. And you can highlight it from there, but honestly, I would just start with lead belcher. Uh, spray paint to prime the model. Corn red. Retributor armor for the gold. Celestor gray for the white. Uh, and then a big old bottle of Agrax Earth Shade, something like that. So that's uh, that is my aid that I can offer you. And for that, it's minimal paints. Um, you can batch paint those things very, very quickly. Um, yeah. Okay, now I got to figure out where I was in the chat. <laughs> Here we go, uh, Apocalypse Moth. Have you ever tried loaded brush blending? It's where you add multiple colors to your brush to achieve an easy blend. Love to try it out. Um, you know, honestly, I don't do a lot of, I'm not, I paint a lot and I enjoy projects, but I'm not really a painter. Like I don't, I don't feel the need to like, how do I word this? I have no intention of getting better at painting. <laughs> um, it's my stress relief. I don't really want to improve. I've improved naturally just by doing it long enough, but it's not um, not a skill that I want to develop. How about that? Like, given a choice between sitting at my computer and getting better at making YouTube videos and painting, I always choose the YouTube one, and I will because because I like it. Uh, let's see. Hope we can see dedicated Manfred and Neferata armies going forward. And monster-themed Manfred and vampire-themed armies. Oh, yeah, that'd be a perfect... Yeah, monsters for Manfred, because he's, like, all conquery, and then... Uh, Neferata's all about the vampires, for sure. I'm a bro, yes. Okay, I apologize. I, did, I just didn't know. I don't recognize the name. I apologize. Spectre says, hey, Doug, great gender-neutral term I've been using is dear lovely soul... <laughs> I, that is cumbersome, but beautiful, and I apologize. <laughs> but yes, um, let's see. Wasn't that basically Rum Gate Wars? Uh, I don't remember, uh, Blight's Creek, I don't. Recall. Oh, you mean Rome Gate Wars, like the book series that documents all the big stuff going on? It it was. You are correct, and people did hate it. You are also correct. The thing is, though, um, everything about the Rome Gate Wars series, I truly believe, if it came out today, it would sell like hotcakes because they front loaded all of this lore and ba and and, that, and models and that kind of stuff to a game that people just largely rejected at launch. So I think. The, the biggest mistake with the Rome Gate War series, both the campaign books and the novels, is just the fact that people rejected GW at that time. You know what I mean? Like, people went over the moon for Wrath of the Ever Chosen. It is such a cool book. It also pales in comparison to what um, the Rome Gate Wars were supposed to be. So it's, I don't know, it's a real tough one. I think that was probably the biggest uh, mistake when it came to the launch of AOS and, and front-loading something so epic and big as that series. And I think I think they got bit for it, you know what I mean, in terms of like spending all this money for production and no one's buying it. Uh, and I, I wonder if they just got cold feet and they're not doing it again on the same scale, which is a real shame. But, you know, they needed to uh, learn what consumers wanted.
Uh, let's see. Koala's Claw. That's to me. Yeah, yeah. Find a reason to be inky by darkness washed with null oil. Could be, yep. Yeah. That'd be a great one. There's lots of different greens you can go. Actually, as I turned around to look at the different greens that I have, I realized I don't have a lot of greens. Like, I just have enough stuff to do, like, warp stone. That's, like, a very specific kind of green. Uh, let's see. Hey, super sorry, just joined. Have you done anything in the lines of Sigmar? I'm painting my entire Stormcast as them. Decided with an ancient... Uh, I've never heard of them. Well, I mean, I've heard of them, but uh, no, I haven't done anything with them lore-wise. That's kind of cool. Fantastic, dude. Uh, let's see. Y'all are replying to each other. That's totally cool. I missed answering this, but it's in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. Right on. I gotta figure out how far away that is. <laughs> but yes, I would love to go. I would love to go to all those little Midwest events and meet people, shake hands, kiss babies, you know. Get, get elected as a Warhammer president. go let's see um it's less a matter of which paints and more how to paint and are my brushes right for the job okay okay cool well let's say you got your paint sorted i apologize uh you got your paint sorted how you paint spray paint the whole thing in lead belcher and then when you're painting to paint very efficiently um i always try to paint from the hardest place to reach on a model out to the surface. Because that way, as you're going, you're covering up mistakes as, as you make them. And so for example, we've been sitting here painting these bases, right? I started, and we'll pick this guy right here because it's a nice fat one that you can see. I started with the metal, which is the deepest inside thing, even these little ridges and that kind of stuff. And then I painted the outside stuff, which is the copper up here on the top, because it's very surface level, easy to reach. And in doing so, as I brought the copper over these areas, I was covering up any of the silver that I put in them by accident. And now, I'm basically going to um, take Carrick Stone, the, the brown that kind of matches this, and cover up any details that were messed up by the brass paint. And so you work from the inside to the outside. So, for your Stormcast model, spray the whole thing with Lead Belcher, it's your base coat. And then you're gonna work from the inside to the outside. Inside would be steel, obviously, but then also that tabard that goes between their legs kind of often, you know, it, it can like warp and twist around and, and um, you know, fold. It's, it's a piece of fabric. I would paint that next, um, starting with the inside going outside. So their thing is it's a gold tabard with a green trim around the outside. Paint the gold first. Then go around the trim with green very carefully. You can always you can always fix your mistakes later. That's just fine. And then um, yeah, that's 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 really what it is. So for example, on the the shield, I would paint the green first because it's the furthest thing in. And then on top of that, build up the white. And then you can always if you like get some you know from the lightning bolt on the green, that's fine. Just go over with green again and, and clean it up. So that would be my example. You always. Um, yeah, starting with the, the deepest recess and working your way outward is a natural way to cover up messed up brush strokes um, and that kind of stuff. And then, honestly, once you throw a wash on it, it all comes together and you look great. <laughs> um, and as for brushes, honestly, like I, I buy the cheapest, crappiest brushes ever. Like, truly. Um, I go to, to Hobby Lobby is our local craft supply store, and I just find whatever the five dollar thirteen pack of you know brush brand brushes, where it's just so generic they don't even bother advertising their name as a company, <laughs> and, and I pick those up. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what I would say. It's not so much about 
you know, right technique or right equipment. It's just finding the, uh, whatever works for you, man. Uh, Biofoot78. Oh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going down bit by bit on my feet here. On an earlier hobby hang, I think you and Jack mentioned starting Soulbound game for the channel. Is that a project? Is there a timetable for it? Um, we do want to. Uh, we're trying to figure out if we want it to be a small thing that we uh, just work through locally and, until I move away, or if we want to start uh, doing it remotely and, that, you know, like it would be a stream where all of us are talking, hanging out, whatever. Um, start it that way so that it doesn't get affected if one of us leaves. Like, physically, we can't show up at, you know, Jack's house or something like that. Um, it is in the works uh, for most of Washington. Well, my county that I live in is now what we call phase two of, you know, getting getting back on track from everything being shut down for covid uh, so things are getting better here, but I know for some of the other guys down south, I believe they are still in phase one, which is much more restrictive. And so, you know, is there a plan for it? Absolutely. Is there a timeline? Nope. Just like everything else. <laughs> no timeline. Um, but I will keep you all informed when I know what's going on more, because that is something I am actually very excited to do. So you have my word. Uh, let's see. Tabletop Minion specializes in painting motivation and simple paint schemes, if that's what you need. Yeah, he had a whole video about why he uses gray. <laughs> I saw that. So, I love Tabletop Minions. I've watched them for years. Um, and the other day I saw his latest video, which was just, why I paint my bases gray. And I was just, my, my mind immediately went to the part where I just, you know, I'm kind of a turd in real life. I'm, I'm kind of, I make, I'm savage with my jokes. And I texted the real one guys and I was like, this is the equivalent of like beauty Instagrammers running out of beauty and makeup stuff and just talking about like avocado toast. <laughs> it's just like, uh, it just seemed so, uh, you know, he had, and then he had some good things to say about uh, color theory and, and making your models pop off the bases. Like, it was useful things. But it was just that initial, like, this is why I like the color gray. <laughs> it reminded me of the, uh, oh, what is it, from Futurama, the neutral planet where everyone's just absolutely neutral. And they're just, everything's beige. <laughs> uh, let's see. See, I honestly hope there is another global campaign like in Malign Portance where players log their games. Oh, dude, me too. I don't I don't know how long it'll be to see that. I mean, I guess technically, if they just made a good way of logging games, it wouldn't, in theory, require a whole lot of social interaction. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I hope, I hope so. I, I agree. I like the campaigns, especially the last one where they were like, oh, order is winning by... Quite the landslide. You know, here's here's a special weapon that corn guys can use and that kind of stuff. I, I like that quite a bit. And I imagine if they if they developed a, a software process wherein we could log our games conveniently, you know, without having to have too many people in a store, just, just for health safety reasons, um, they could probably just carbon copy that for both 40k and... AOS and be just fine. So I want this place to look super dirty, and so what I'm doing is uh, stippling paint on, rather than going and doing a full highlight layer. That's what I did for my uh, Necromunda terrain, and I like the way it looks. It makes this nice texture looking thing. And that's an exact Doug quote right there. You should paint this way because it makes a nice texture looking thing. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> I have no strong feelings one way or the other. Exactly. It's a beige alert. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Half of my dialogue with my wife is just me quoting uh, Futurama. Ailey, I forgot how cumbersome building old command groups is. Command groups? Oh, you mean like for like the different... Um, yeah, like how the, the armies used to have all these different command attachments and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, where's that? Um, dang, the flus consists of a mysterious storm cast. That's it. Gordrak killed one as his helmet. I love it. Spezia, as Warhammer President, what's your first act? Oh, man, if I could be Warhammer President? Mm. My first act would be to get rid of maximum sized unit bonuses, except for factions where they are thematically supposed to be very horde heavy. Like, it, where, where it makes sense. Like, just having general troops that get a bonus or a discount when they're full squads, I think. I don't know. I want to see more big monsters. I want to see less hulking blocks of troop. Because it makes games go faster. And it makes people who buy really cool monsters feel like they're cool monsters. That would be mine. Um, I would probably... The biggest thing to me, honestly, in, in AOS, the only big thing really is just addressing that I want fewer big blocks of troops and more more big cool looking models. They make so many just giant big cool models and they put them in the start collecting boxes because I'm assuming because quite frankly they don't sell that well. You know, like you got the, the Gorgon Cygor kit and that kind of stuff and some of the chariots and that thing, but... It's like, man, but they should be the scariest thing. Because when that new person picks out that box, they're like, Hell yeah, Gorgon! <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever. And uh, it should be. So that's my platform. Uh, sorry to say already, but what would you say is your favorite AOS army? Well, right now, I, I mean, I, I have to say it is Maggotkin of Nurgle, mainly because um, I painted them up and I have not gotten rid of them yet, which, if you know me, speaks volumes, <laughs> to, say it, to say it politely. Because normally by now I would have already gotten rid of it two times over. And I was considering it for a little while. I was like, maybe I'll do like Seraphon. And then once I actually had some Seraphon in my hands, I was like, my heart's not in it. I'm not ready to do a full army project. And so I got rid of them and I've just been thinking about it. I was like, but I love my Magakin. Like they're, they, not only do they, I put more work into them than any other army. Uh, in terms of modeling and painting and that kind of stuff. But also, um, I love the way they play. So I went with a very special snowflake list uh, that really leans into Puscoil um, Blight Lords, who are the fat boys on flies that come into units of two. And I, I love them. They're just, I just love them. <laughs> um, but yeah. Because I, I can fling them forward with the tree. Honestly, what it is, it's not about the strategy. It's it's about the fact that they are a, my list that I created is a one-trick pony. Okay, It's going to try and pin you in your deployment zone. Um, it's a two-drop army, I believe, is what I got it down to at one point. Um, I think. I might be misremembering that, but don't me that. But basically, it's a two- or three-drop army. It is very light on drops because they're all in battalion. And I, I, I can slingshot a unit of two and a unit of four of those dudes. Just throw them up in your face turn one. And they won't kill a whole lot. Uh, they have a lot of attacks. 
go chip away at something, but their whole purpose is to just tie your army down. Um, while the rest of the Blight Kings and stuff are moving on to objectives. And then the idea is just, can you dislodge the flies in enough time to where you, as a player, have enough time to get over to the objectives and then also dislodge Blight Kings and demons and all, you know what I mean? All that stuff with a neg to hit and, and all that kind of work. So um, it's one of those things. If you can answer it, cool. Game's over real fast. Let's go get a beer. If you can't, I win. <laughs> <laughs> and I like those kinds of lists. <laughs> or it's not it's it's not going to be this long drawn out, you know, battle of eternity where we're really pressing the clock to see if we can finish this game for the next round and it's like you win or I win. I win, cool. You win, cool. You want to get a coffee? <laughs> and that's that to me is the the pinnacle of tournament lists right there is just boom. And then and when I played uh, War Machine and Hordes, I was the exact same way. Whereas, like, uh, so in that game, if your general dies, you just lose. Like, there's always an assassination uh, win condition. So, you know, even if your main strategy is losing, you can, you know, go for gold and try to assassinate their leader. And that's, I would just build my list around that. And people didn't like it because they were like, well, you know, we're not, I feel like I'm not interacting. You just, you just do three things and my leader's dead. It's like, yeah, but if those three things don't work, you just win. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, I guess I didn't even think of that. I was like, yeah. Yeah, you just win. <laughs> uh, oh, man, I'm way behind in the chat. Give me one second. I'm just going to read and chat with you guys, and I'll catch up here. Um, inside Out Painting. Yep, that's always a good plan. Thank you. Thank you, Spicy Shrimp. Need to play Fire Slayer and Soulbound. It's my calling. Mine is Devoted of Sigmar. Hope we see you on Reeling Ones again soon. Me too. Uh, hey Doug, just came home from work. About to start building Spire Tyrants. Nice! I haven't gotten those yet, but I, I want to. They're very cool. I already caught up on my, my Futurama quotes. If you ever watch That Stops Working, I highly recommend breaking it apart. There's some great basing conversion bits. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's little clockwork mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've had ever owned a watch since phones were developed. <laughs> uh, like cell phones. Um, as someone of mixed heritage, those beauty YouTubers are going to lose their minds when they discover avocado can go on things other than toast. <laughs> right. That's so funny. Uh, my new Seraphon lore is that Slon was the last born before the end times. Being so young, the Skinks manipulate it. Oh, that's cool. The farm we found a cache of old world tech. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Old one technology before the Draconian. Right on. That's cool. Is there any real difference between Chaos Black and Abaddon Black? Um, as far as the paints, yes. Yeah. So Abaddon Black usually refers to their spray paint, Chaos Black, I believe. Or it's the way around. Isn't Chaos Black the spray paint and Abaddon Black is the, the brush one? Um, they do have a slightly different finish. And so if you watch tutorials where um, Duncan or Peachy prime a model with the spray black, they oftentimes just do a quick light layer of the Abaddon one. This way, going forward, if you have to do any touch-ups and you use Abaddon Black, because um, you want to brush it on rather than spray again, uh, it, it matches. So that's, that's, there's just a little bit. Oh, Blight's Creek totally nailed it. The, the, the finish is different. So, yeah, yeah. Which AOS Rome besides Axie would you like to see expanded first? Grr. I want Grr. So bad. It's my favorite freaking realm. Um... Given, given the ogre rule, right? Yeah, yeah. Plus wounds to keep their feeling big and bad. Yeah, so that way a, a monster can set on an objective and be worth more to contest it. Again, it's it's a really good idea. I've seen it passed around a lot. I just, I also, I also want hordes to go down because that hordes also um, getting or not getting rid of mitigating how many armies lean towards having hordes of things makes the game more approachable for new people. So, and limiting it to like, you know, that's their thing. This is the army that that is their thing, I think would go a long way. 
Let's see, we got... Give me one second, just looking for a paint. Here we go, Black Templar. Sarah Fawn are beautiful, and I feel personally offended you don't love as much as I do. That's so funny. Sean Clark. Hey, Doug. I'm really happy to see you showing interest in 40K and excited you're doing some lore videos, too. You should definitely do some lore on the Dark Angels. Okay, I'll check that out. I'll check that out. Um, I have two videos going up this week talking about Gene Stealer cults, and then I'm going to do a series on Grey Knights. Yeah, and I figure, you know... If I uh, do lore videos for those factions every time I hop to a different army, I'll get all of 40k covered in about three months. <laughs> now you are in for the riveting stuff when I sit here and I paint black on the rim of these bases. So this is the kind of high quality entertainment y'all signed up for. <laughs> um, question Can clan pestilence exploding rat spam? Hold on one second here. I think I missed your question. Uh, there's a bunch of redacted things. So I'm not sure if it's a response. Question. Clan Pestilence exploding rat spam is overpowered. Um, it's a lot. You know what? Honestly, overpowered is a weird thing. And, and the reason I say that is because... Uh, are there ways to mitigate it? Absolutely. The problem is, and this is my thought... It can be overpowered at a tournament when you have a time limit and the Clan Pestilence player uh, is eating up all your time because every time you attack him, he has to stop the game and, and roll to see if he hits, if he wounds. And that, I think, is the bigger problem than, than the ability on a surface level. Now, if you're not playing in an event, I don't know what to tell you. It's still not my favorite thing. Um, I like those abilities. I do like them. Like, I like the mechanic of... You know, when this guy dies, before you take him off the battlefield, he gets to do a cool thing. Like, that's a, that to me is awesome. It's more to do with... Um, it's on a horde unit in a horde army with so many of those. Like, it's, it's wildly different on a unit of five blood warriors than it is on a unit of 40 plague monks. Right, when you talk about the logistics of, of what that ability is, so... Man, hmm. Hot take, paint your base rim black no matter what the base of color is. Oh yeah, I agree. Actually, to be brutally honest with you, I don't like modeling bases at all. If it were up to me, I would just do the standard black bases and keep them solid black. Because that way they look good no matter what table surface you're playing on. And I say that as someone who has doing this, like the, the pre-made bases. And I also did full green stuff on my own stuff. Like I put the work in to do good bases. But I don't like it. I'm not happy about it. But peer pressure is real. Uh, let's see. I like the idea of the core of every army being a block of troops, but I also want every army to have a few big centerpieces. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of every army having like their elite specialist, like their honor guard. But I don't, I don't necessarily need every army to have a numerically big unit of troops. But I see where you're coming from. 
Like, I do think they should all have, like, their elite. Like, I love the idea of, like, here's a bunch of, of clan rats, and then there's the storm vermin. You're like, oh, crap. Oh, Lord, they're coming. Because storm vermin are supposed to be super nasty and scary. Making a total mess of these bases I just worked so hard on. I'm getting this black everywhere. I'm going to skip this. So in other ones, I've used uh, Contrast, the Black Templar, um, to just do the rims real quick. It makes It is really nice, but it's too liquidy for these ones because there's so many cracks and crevices I'm learning. So oh, we got to do it the long way with a bad and black. It's a little bit, you can mix it to be a little bit thicker so it doesn't quite pour straight into uh, the crevices. Um, let's see. I was curious because my chief force is fire slayers, obviously very melee heavy. I just struggle against them because I murder myself. <laughs> yeah, super fair. Um, yeah, like I said, like I mean, do I think it's like fundamentally going to destroy the game? Like you know, broken? No. But, is it annoying as heck? Yeah. Especially if you're playing somebody who's either A, new, in which case it's an innocent mistake. It's just they have to get used to, you know, memorizing the stat lines of their units to make, you know, those kinds of rolls happen very quickly and smoothly. Uh, or, you know, it is prime opportunity for someone to not... Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I always assume innocence when it comes to this but like slow playing where it's like you know i'm for me the true definition of slow playing is when you maliciously eat time but there, honestly i think most of the time it's just people don't pre, you know they can prepare the army in the sense of having tactics in the right models and that kind of stuff but if they don't prepare in the sense of knowing how to move it quickly and efficiently like that man people get real frustrated Okay. I'll go through and clean all these up once they dry, but that's all right. Uh, let's see. Doom and Darkness. Hey, Doug. Hey, everyone. Hey, hey, Doom. Um, uh, Spetia. So, Doug, why Grey Knights? So, I chose Grey Knights um, for a few reasons. One, they are Space Marines, essentially, so they have a very easy-to-remember stat line. Um, and that's important to me, because I don't know how often I'll get to game in the foreseeable future just because of moving and COVID and, you know, the world the way it is. Um, so having something that's easy to remember, really good for me. Secondly, I like the... F I, I have always loved units that are wizards or psychers, depending on what, what f flavor of Games Workshop brand you're playing. Um, there's just something about it that I find really interesting. And so... Um, yeah, I, I wanted to try something like that out. Um, they are elite. There is just a few of them. I I wanted to try an army that I could try to do the same thing I did with my Nurgle, which is I put so much work into it that I don't want to get rid of it. Um, so that's why I'm doing these bases. And uh, I decided, you know what? We'll get them some good bases. We will... 
Um, I, I came up with a scheme that I really like where it is starting with Lead Belcher and then building up the new uh, Grey Knight Steel color where it's, it's silver but with a hint of blue and it looks really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then I can just focus on like the little stuff, the tabards and those little details that make them so cool. Plus they have some neat characters. Uh, and one thing that they have that the Gene Stealer cults didn't that I was excited about was they have access to, uh, well, first of all, everything that the Imperium has because they can just take a detachment of it. But uh, also mainly because they have flyers and dreadnoughts and I like those models. And I've never... I've never really played with a flyer much. Like I had, when I, at one point I had Death Watch. And I, I had their flyer, but that was also before they got their book, and it was just it was just awkward. Um, like rules wise, because they're already I don't know. It was it was just a weird thing. So um, yeah, that's that's why Grey Knights. Uh, let's see. Hey Dougie. Doug Doug got a break at work. Decided to watch some plastic crack. <laughs> well, welcome. We are just chilling. Uh, let's see. What are these bases for? These are for Grey Knights. Grey Knights just... Oh, and also Grey Knights. Um, the Grey Knight Omnibus was the first Black Library publication I ever read. Because I played uh, Dawn of War, the computer game, and I was like, man, these things are so cool. Let me go find a book. And so I went to my local books, or used bookstore, Half Price Books, and uh, picked up, yeah, the Space Marine Omnibus. And I was like, this is red. And then I picked up the Space Wolves Omnibus and was very disappointed. <laughs> that is done. That is done. I don't. I don't, uh, I don't mesh with their lore. So I was like, eh. Let's, let's go back to the first one. The first one was real good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Anyone who shares in this hobby. Love you guys, gals. Keep playing. Gotta run. I'll see you later, Cody. Have a wonderful night, my friend. <laughs> Let me see. Oh my god, one more. <laughs> uh, let's see, what heresy is this? Heresy? This is the opposite of heresy. This is, this is emperor fearing loving stuff. Great book. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so my question is, what of the Necron range and the new coming stuff do you think I can use to substitute Seraphon monsters? I have no idea. I actually, uh, I, I stay far and away from the rumor engine and, and released picks and that kind of stuff. Like, I don't believe it exists until it's on my store shelf. <laughs> um, I don't know. Because I, I, I couldn't even name some of the stuff that they're coming out with or they've previewed or whatever. Those need to sit for just a smidge. Let me try and get some water to get this paint off my hands here. Mauler Fiend equals Connorsaur. Yeah, he wanted to stick to... Um, 
Seems like he wanted to stick to Necron stuff. I don't know. Let's see. Give me one second, I'm just catching up on the chat. Um, thinking of getting Gene Stealer cults and but painting them as the Xenorite tech heretics from Renegade Forward World. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, and there's actually rules to supplement one of those things, uh, a thing like that. So the one of the cults in the book, like the standard factions they give you, um, I think there's six of them. One of them they give you is uh, a bunch of rich people, part of Big Pharma, decided that they were going to create a better human. And so they caught a gene stealer on the black, you know, exotic animal market. And we're doing all a bunch of tests to try and make them super based off Tyranid DNA, which of course then morphed and evolved to then change the humans. And so they actually created their own gene stealer cult <laughs> infestation because they were a bunch of nerds, <laughs> which I thought was a nice touch. That was a nice thing to add. Okay. Let's see. Okay, friends, I've been at it for an hour and a half. It is now 8.30. i got to go make some dinner for my lovely wife, who is infinitely patient with me. Um, but I will catch you all very, very soon, and we'll have some cool models. The next time I'm on, I should, I should be down to actually start painting uh, some Grey Knights. Let me see. I'm just cleaning up the little edges here that I... Totally biffed on, like a dingus. Let's see, get rid of this, get rid of that. Okay, if it looks a little derpy just because it's supposed to be like corrupted, you know, falling apart city, but we can we can make that a little better. Anyway. Uh, Joseph Gonzalez, thanks for the entertainment. Oh man, thank you so much. Six dollars and sixty-six cents. <laughs> you take it easy, guys. You guys are awesome. Um, I'll catch you next time. And what? When's my next painting hangout? What's today? Saturday. I might do one tomorrow. We'll see how productive I am when it comes to videos. Um, but yeah, I will catch you all later. Have a wonderful day. Happy wargaming.